Hello everyone, we're going to talk about chapter 12, 14, and 15. We'll start with chapter 12, Chronic Neurological Disorders. Parkinson's disease, which you guys have talked through um, med surge class uh, to where we've talked about the signs and symptoms that we're looking for. Um, it is a chronic disease. It's something that progressively gets worse. What our big main focus with Parkinson's disease is um, having them be able to still continue doing their ADLs and being as independent as possible. So definition of Parkinson's is a degenerative disorder of the central nervous system caused by death of neurons that are produced in the brain, the neurotransmitter dopamine. So just remember dopamine is what goes with Parkinson's. That's what the patient is losing. Uh, they are losing their dopamine receptors. Okay, this slide shows um, some of the signs and symptoms that you're going to see. You'll start seeing tremors in the early stages. Um, they'll have the face ma like uh, mask-like faces. Their arms uh, will be flexed at the elbows and wrists. They'll have tremors everywhere. They'll have the stoop posture, the rigidity, which is the, like the stiffness. They'll be leaning over more at the hips. Um, and their knees will be slightly bent so as we had talked they're going to be more at risk for falls and then especially with their shuffling uh, steps they don't nor they won't they'll start taking um, doing shuffling with their feet instead of actually picking their feet up and walking okay this con uh, academy video what is parkinson's disease i recommend you going back and re-watching it we showed it in class um, but this is these two videos that I have here on the PowerPoints are really good and do good explanation on what Parkinson's is, how the medications and treatments are that we use for them. Um, this video is just the general overall, and then the next video would be the one for the treatments and medications that will be used. Okay, so the first group of medications that are going to be used are the cholinesterase inhibitors. The drug is Don Epizil which is Aricept. The action of it is to prevent the enzyme cholinesterase from inactivating the acetylcholine, which is going to increase the amount of acetylcholine available at the receptor sites. So this can be used for Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's. A lot of times you'll see it used more with Alzheimer's disease than with um, Parkinson's. Um, cholinesterase is still on the same medication. Complications can be excessive muscarnic um, stimulation. So this is going to increase that GI motility, um, GI secretions, diaphoresis, increased salvation, bradycardia, urinary urgency, meiosis, and then spasm of accommodation. So this is focusing of that lens for near um, vision. Um, so what we can do with the increase in GI um, motility and secretions, they may be more at risk for developing heartburn or GERD because um, of the increased secretions. Um, they just need to know, uh, notify their doctor um, if these are intolerable. Um, they can use uh, atropine to help treat the severe adverse effects. Um, then your cholinergic crisis. Um, is the excessive muscarnic stimulation, so we're overstimulating um, the muscarnic receptors um, in the respiratory depression from neuromuscular blockage. So it can go in and um, block the muscular uh, neuromuscular that is responsible for your respiratory um, center. Um, so if this occurs, we need to obviously support their respiratory um, ABCs. Once again, airway is number one. So we may have to me mechanically ventilate these patients as well as maybe starting out with oxygen and then leading to uh, uh, ventilation. Um, they can administer atropine to help reverse this stimulation. So anybody that's on this medication, we want resusc resuscitation equipment at the bedside. Contraindications and precautions. Um, this is a pregnancy uh, risk category C, so it's risk over benefit. Um, obstruction of the GI and their renal systems is going to be contraindicated. And then they need to use, um, sorry, they um, precautions they need to use um, in people that have seizure disorders, hypo 
thyroidism, peptic ulcer disease, um, asthma, bradycardia, or hypotension. Once again, remember, we're already stimulating um, the central nervous system, and then you have hypothyroidism on top of it. The, uh, the body's already going to be stimulated um, through that process, so we just got to watch these clients a lot more closely. The peptic ulcer disease um, with the increased um, gastric secretions, um, that could make that worse, obviously. So interactions can be atropine and succocholine. Um, succocholine, uh, we abbreviate it sucks, is what we use, and we'll talk about that further on because we also can do use that for intubation. Nursing considerations. Um, uh, sorry. Um, we need to, the dose is obviously going to be individualized, so it's not going to be just a random, okay, we're going to do five milligrams to start with, with everybody. Um, it's definitely individualized to the patient. And having those patients wear uh, medical alert bracelets, so if something would happen, then they, the EMS or um, would be alerted to something else going on and to look at their a bracelet to figure out um, on there what it has. Um, also remember guys that dopamine cannot cross the blood brain barrier so that's why we're needing these medications that we're going to talk about next which is your levodopa, carbidopa, um, your dopamine agonist and then your um, dopaminergic medications. Okay, this is the um, con video that uh, Academy video that we were talking about with management with medications of Parkinson's. Please go back and rewatch this um, for further explanation. Okay, so anti um, Parkinson's medications. The action is going to halt the progression of Parkinson's disease. Um, it's going to offer relief from dyskinesias and remember those um, involuntary movements to where they overly start um, having those movements um, on the video where it has the pendulum to where you know they keep it to where it sways and then just so far out and then what's going to happen with the dyskinesia it's going to start swinging the pendulum clear the other way um, if we don't get this under control. Um, increasing the ability to perform ADLs which I said is very important by maintaining the balance between dopamine and acetylcholine and the extra primordial um, system. So that's where your um, dystonia, acute dystonia comes in, Parkinson's uh, come in, um, tardive dyskinesia. So the first medication is going to be your levodopa, carbidopa. Uh, therapeutic use is most effective in Parkinson's disease. Unfortunately, it does have a wearing off time, so the longer they're on it. So what this means is so if they take it, for instance, say every six hours, the wearing off process will start, it'll start wearing off maybe at five hours or four hours to where they have that two hours, an hour to two hours to where they have no medication that is controlling those tremors, controlling um, other side effects of Parkinson's disease until they get that next dose on board. Uh, full ther therapeutic effects take several months um, for this occur. So with levodopa, carbidopa, they try to uh, keep not started as soon um, because it only has a life of helping about five to ten years. So the younger that somebody is diagnosed, um, you they need to try other medications before they go to actually um, straight to the levodopa, carbidopa. Um, so it can be used and we can control these symptoms and have them have an independent life as long as possible. So side effects are um, nausea, vomiting, drowsiness. So once again, making sure that um, they know how they're going to respond to the medication um, before um, they drive, operate machinery, um, if nausea or vomiting, they could take it with medica or with food. Uh, dyskinesias, the head bobbing, the tics, the grimacing, the tremors. Orthostatic hypotension, you know, make sure you get a baseline for um, a, a blood pressure so then that way you can keep an eye on it. 
Um, having them monitor their blood pressure at home, making sure they report if they become dizzy, lightheaded, um, that they're possibly low, their blood pressure is dropping while they're changing positions, having them change positions uh, slowly. Cardiovascular effects um, from the beta-1 stimulation. Remember, beta-1s are the only ones in the heart. So they could experience tachycardia, palpitations, dysrhythmias. So once again, you want to monitor vital signs, get a baseline EKG, um, and then notify the provider if any manifestations occur. And then obviously use cautiously in patients that already have cardiovascular um, disease or disorders, um, something cardiovascular going on. So psychosis, um, some people may get visual hallucinations, nightmares, paranoid ideations. So they can use second generation antipsychotics for this. Uh, clonazepine is one of them that they can use to help decrease these um, effects um, without de increasing the manifestations of Parkinson's disease. Because remember, some of these antipsychotics will cause those extra pyramidal um, effects, the dark tardive dyskinesia, the acute dystonia, um, they can cause those. <clears throat> um, so avoid concurrent use of conventional antipsychotics such as your haloperidol um, or haldol because it can block um, the dopamine receptors which once again in Parkinson's disease we need those dopamine uh, receptors because we're losing them. And then check for concurrent use of antidepressants, MAOIs, medications, um, because once again, remember, we talked about causing the um, antihypertensive crisis, so do not use the levodopa carbidopa within two weeks of them using an MAOI. Um, discoloration of their sweat and urine. Um, this finding is harmless, so just forewarn them that it's okay. It's not anything to get overly concerned about. Activation of malignant melanoma. Um, do not administer administration or do not administer this medication to clients who have skin lesions that per the provider has that has not diagnosed of what it is. So if we are not sure that this client or patient has um, melanoma, then we don't want to be and they have lesions. And until they get those checked out by their provider, we do not want to be giving them this medication. Okay, the dopamine agonist, this is your Mirapex. Um, it's a monotherapy, um, which is, remember, a single drug in the early stage of Parkinson's. Um, and in conjunction with levodopa carbidopa in the later stages to allow for lower doses of the levodopa carbidopa. So then that way they don't have to start out with the um, higher doses of the levodopa carbidopa, then they can gradually increase it as needed so it, we can get the full lasting years out of it. Um, and they use this, uh, the Mirapex, more of like I had talked before of the younger clients because the younger they are, you don't want to be starting them on the levodopa carbidopa um, as quickly. Um, adverse effects, sudden inability to stay awake. So um, they need to know, uh, notify um, them immediately um, if this occurs because um, this could be a danger to themselves as well as others if they're driving or have a job to where they're um, using machinery. Um, daytime sleepiness, there's a potential for drowsiness. So once again, avoid activities that cause um, require alertness. Um, avoid another CNS depressant such as alcohol. So any other CNS depressants you want to avoid. Or the static hypotension, once again the lightheadedness, dizziness, advise them to change their position slowly. They could have psychosis with this. Um, once again the second generation antipsychotics um, to help this. Um, the visual hallucinations and nightmares that um, occur especially in your elderly or your older adults. Um, impulse control disorder, so such as gambling, shopping, binge eating, hypersexuality. Um, manifestations usually appear within about nine months after starting the medication. So anybody that's going to be prescribed this medication needs to be um, screened for compulsive uh, behavior before initiating therapy. So then that way 
they can either choose not to use start on this drug if they have that tendency um, to have a gambling problem, a shopping or a binge um, problem. Dyskinesia, once again, the head bobbing, tics, grimacing, tremors um, can help dec by decreasing the dose could help um, alleviate these. And then nausea, so if this occurs, then um, they can take it with food and it will help slow down um, the absorption of it. Okay, amantadine, um, which is a dopamine releaser. The dopamine source from the neurons uh, prevents dopamine reuptake and can block the cholinergic and glutamate receptors. Um, a amantadine uh, releases dopamine stores from the neurons um, and prevents the dopamine reuptake and can block Uh, adverse effects can be CNS effects, so confusion, dizziness, uh, restlessness. So once again, like we had talked about, avoiding activities that require alertness until while they're taking this medication until they really know how it's going to affect them. The um, atropine-like atropine effects, dry mouth, blurred vision, mydrasis, which is the dilated pupils, Urinary um, hesitancy or retention, constipation. So once again, how can we um, assess this um, through, um, they need to notify their physician if they have any of these. Um, we got need to do INOs, especially the people that have hesitancy or urinary retention to see if, um, and then strict INO to where then we can see what's going in is the same as coming out or pretty close to it. Dry mouth, they can do um, chewing gum, sucking on candy, constipation, the high fiber diet, exercise, increasing their fluids, um, two to three liters a day. Then they can have discoloration of the skin, which you will have the two uh, pictures of it um, in the next slides. This is discoloration of the skin uh, will subside after discontinuing the medication. So it's not something that's going to become permanent or if they're on for long periods of time, that it's going to be a permanent issue. So these are your um, two slides that have, you see the purplish color. Um, it just looks like a mosaic um, on their skin is what it looks like with the purple uh, bluish discoloration. And there we are in some scars, um, stretch marks maybe, some other scars that they ha just have that. And this is more of a pink. Um, color with a darker maybe purple. Okay, then we have the catecholamine O um, methyl transferase and um, inhibitors the COMT category. This is COMTAN. Um, it's more beneficial in combination with the levodopa carbidopa to inhibit the metabolism of the levodopa in the intestines and peripheral tissues. GI complications can be GI, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation. Um, so constipation, you know, increasing the exercise, increasing our fluids, eating a high fiber diet, um, taking it with food might help decrease the feeling of, um, and then vomiting and hopefully maybe the diarrhea. Discoloration of urine um, is going to be a yellow orange, so make sure you forewarn your client. Rhabdomyolysis, this is, um, they may complain of muscle pain, muscle tension. This is severe and life-threatening. It is the wasting away of the muscle. So they need to report this immediately to their provider. Then liver failure as well. So we want to make sure we monitor their liver function test throughout therapy. And then make sure they watch for manifestations of liver failure. So nausea, fatigue, jaundice, abdominal pain. And then anybody that already has hepatic um, impairment, they you you know the doctor wants to be more um, aware and concerned with starting these kind of medications because one of the side effects or adverse effects is the liver failure. Um, monoamine oxidase B, so MAOBs. Um, this is your uh, sedulin. Um, it's a first-line medication with levodopa carbidopa for decreasing the wear wearing off effect. Preserve the dopamine levodopa produces the prolonged effects of levodopa for about up to two years. Um, insomnia. 
can occur so you don't want to administer this um, any later than noon so more of a morning medication to um, prevent the insomnia hypertensive crisis resulting from consuming foods with triamine which we talked about before um, and it lists there in your book they're on 92 so anything avocados soybeans figs smoked meats dried or cured um, fish cheese yeast products beer Shante, uh, wine, chocolate, caffeinated beverages. Then nausea and diarrhea. Um, just take it with meals and limit the protein intake um, because it can increase um, the absorption. Oh, sorry. Um, take with meals and limit the amount of protein because it can decrease the absorption. So... Okay, benzotropin, which is a centrally acting anticholinergic. Um, this is cogentin. Um, it's a centrally acting anticholinergic um, antagonist, which remember antagonist is going to work against um, something. So it's going to diminish cholinergic effects. So the neuron excitability, it's going to um, decrease due to the decreased dopamine. Nausea and vomiting, take with food. Avoid your high protein snacks. Atropine-like effects, the dry mouth, blurred vision, mydrasis, the dilated pupils, which is that, urinary retention, constipation. So once again, having them report this to the provider. INOs um, to monitor the urinary retention. Gum, eat foods high in fiber, increase fluids for two to three liters a day. Um, advise the client to have periodic eye exams. Um, to major, make sure they watch the interocular, increased interocular pressure. Um, that can result in glaucoma. And then your antihistamine effects. So sedation, drowsiness. So nothing, activities that require alertness until while they're taking the medication. And then admit, um, avoid administering to older adults due to the CNS adverse effects. Sedations, confusion, delusions, um, hallucinations. Patient education um, for all of these uh, family members need to be included because a lot of times they're going to assist in their care at home. Um, the loss of effects, they need to notify the physician um, suddenly if they have loss of effects of the medication when of the medication occurs. Um, effects might be noticeable um, for several weeks to several months. Medication holidays. Uh, to require this has to be done in a medical facility it's not something that they can do at home avoid high protein uh, meals and snacks to help um, so then that way they'll have more of an increase in the absorption because the proteins will decrease that absorption um, avoid pregnancy while taking levodopa or the mirapex um, don't stop this um, abruptly um, and then um, uh, don't um, avoid centidime and uh, with the Mirapex. And then how do we know that this medication was effective? How do we know? We know because is there absent of tremors? Are they less irritable? Less stiffness do they complain about? And then once again that they're able to increase their ability to perform their ADLs. Once again that is very important. Seizures. Causes of seizures can be any sort of infectious disease, trauma, metabolic disorders, vascular disorders or diseases, pediatric disorders such as febrile seizures, and that's typically the one you're going to see unless there's been trauma done, um, neoplastic disease such as tumors um, or any sort of cancer. Antiepileptics, drugs, the traditionals are phenobarbital, Fentoyton, carbamazepine, and valporic acid. Newer ones used are um, gabapentin, lamotrigine, um, tupiramate, um, levotri, acetan, which is Keppra, and then pregabalin. The action of epileptics are to control the seizure disorders by various mechanisms, slowing the entrance of sodium and calcium back into the neurons. We need calcium for um, the firing 
um, suppressing neuronal firing and then enhancing the inability um, effects of GABA. So as we had talked before, epilepsy um, is any condition characterized by reoccurrent seizures. Remember that we can use an EEG to diagnose. Um, also other um, medications that can be used, which I didn't put on here, we've talked about benzodiazepines, which is your diazepam and lorazepam, which can treat status epilepticus, which is an acute prolonged seizure. Um, things that can go on, they become hypoxic because they're not having enough oxygen circulating. Um, hypoglycemic because their muscles are using up all of the glucose as their energy. Hypothermia um, because their muscles are engaged and working, it makes them um, lose the heat. Um, CO2 retention, increased lactic acid, and then um, they're more acidotic. Okay. So your phenobarbital um, sorry. treats um, simple and complex partial seizures, um, tonic-clonic seizures. So your simple partial are your foot, face, and arm complex partial, or they stare blankly. They experience a non-purposeful repetitive movement um, is what is occurring. And then your tonic-clonic is just a seizure after seizure after seizure. Okay, so phenobarbital, we um, are using um, complications, can be CNS effects. So adults, you're going to see drowsiness, sedation, depression. Older adults, confusion and anxiety. And uh, children, irritability and hyperactivity, they're going to be the opposite. So we need to make sure we monitor for these, um, have them monitor for these manifestations. Um, avoid driving or anything that's going to um, cause them to ha be alert. Um, contraindications, porphyria, which um, is the buildup of certain chemicals related to the RBCs, proteins, your blood blood cells, severe respiratory illness, liver disease, kidney impairment, um, pregnancy, um, risk for fetal malformations. Um, don't um, they interact with other CNS depressants? So have them avoid taking um, any other CNS depressants. Oral contraceptives. It's going to decrease the effectiveness. So make sure that they um, are using extra protection. Um, as well, um, the toxicity for phenobarbital, nystagmus, which is remember the eye movements, the quick eye movements, um, at ataxia which is the loss of full control of bodily movement, respiratory depression, coma, pinpoint pupils, hyponatremia, and death. Um, make sure that you airway. We're thinking airway first, so administer oxygen. We may have to go further and intubate them. Um, monitor their vital signs and make sure that you have res any um, resuscitation equipment um, available. Um, and then it also can decrease um, the effectiveness, the synthesis of vitamin K and vitamin D. So they need to monitor um, laboratory values, so your INRs, your calcium, and your vitamin D as well. Okay, so your fentoin, um, it can treat simple and complex and tonic-clonic seizures, CNS effects, nystagmus, sedation, ataxia, double vision, cognitive impairment. So just monitor for these CNS effects and notify the provider. Um, gingival hyperplasia, which I'll show you a picture of. Um, it's the overgrowth of gums, so they need to use soft toothbrushes. And they may have bleeding gums, so they need to um, have good oral hygiene. So dental floss, um, massaging the gums, and folic acid to help hopefully um, decrease this occurrence. Skin rash, withhold the medication and notify the provider if a rash develops. Cardiovascular effects, so dysrhythmias and um, hypotension. Um, if this patient is to receive fentoin IV, no more than 50 milligrams per minute um, in a diluted solution. Um, it's contraindicated in anybody that has a normal um, sinus bradycardia, um, a sinoatrial block, and then strokes Adams syndrome. Endocrine. So, coarsening of facial features, hertisms, which is the facial features on women, um, the hair, 
interference with vitamin D. So they need to make sure that they're getting enough vitamin D and vitamin C. And then just report any of these changes. Um, also interference with vitamin K dependent clotting factors. Um, so we need to monitor those as well. Um, and then they need to start, and this is more in infants. Um, they need to prophylactically deliver or administer vitamin K to clients who are pregnant for at least one month prior to delivery. And then purple glove syndrome, um, it affects the hands and arms. Um, it's a discoloration, kind of a very dark purple, and um, it has edema, swelling, and then it can also cause blisters on top of that. And I'll have a picture of that as well. Here is your um, gingival hyperplasia. You see how the gums um, are growing over the teeth. And so just think of that lady that I was telling you about that has that you barely even see the bottoms of her teeth. And this is that purple glove. Um, the blisters, it's bleeding. I mean, it just looks like you can pop them. Um, and then just all that fluid would come out, blood and um, either serous sanguinous um, or sanguinous uh, drainage. Um, contraindications, pregnancy risk category D, um, pregnancy, um, so it can cause, um, cleft lip, cleft lip palate, um, other, uh, formations, uh, the de developmental delays, um, yep, developmental deficiencies, heart defects, and cleft lip and palate. Um, interactions, your oral contraceptives, warfarin, glucocorticoids, alcohol, diazepam, isonazide, uh, centidine, uh, valproic acid, carbamazepine, phenobarbital, and CNS depressants. Okay, carbamazepine. This is CNS effects. They can treat simple, complex, and tonic-clonic seizures. Uh, Stagnagnus, um, double vision. Vertigo, staggering gait, headache can occur, um, but it usually uh, minimally affects the cognitive function. Um, so they're starting out with a low, low dose and administer this at bedtime um, to hopefully avoid some of the, with the vertigo and the eye twitching with the pupils moving back and forth. Hemolo um, hematologic effects, so your leukopenia and your thrombocytopenia, which is your low white count and low um, platelet count, anemia, um, need baseline CBC and platelet count, and then just make sure the doctor orders um, throughout the therapy um, to monitor those. Have the patient monitor for any bruising, bleeding of gums, sore throat, fever, pallor, uh, weakness, and infection. Um, the sore throat, fever, pallor, weakness, infection, um, they're going to have a harder time fighting off any of this if they have a low white count. Um, do not administer to this with anybody that has bone marrow suppression or bleeding disorders. Um, hypoosmolarity, it promotes the secretion. Carbamazepine will promote the, the secretion of um, ADH, which is your antidiuretic hormone. So it's going to inhibit the release of... Um, they're not going to be secreting the water. They're not getting rid of it. They're just going to fill up even more. So you need to definitely watch your people that have heart failure um, because they will end up in fluid overload with this. Um, and then, you know, strict INOs, um, watch the edema level, and then the hypertension, and then decreased um, urine output as well. Monitor the sodium levels throughout therapy. Skin disorders. Dermatitis, Steven Johnson syndrome, rash. Remember, Steven Johnson is life threatening. So, any of these a rash occurs, they need to let the physician know. Um, otherwise, they can use an anti inflammatory or an anti um, histamine to treat. Um, pregnancy risk category D, um, benef risk over benefits. Um, pregnancy, birth defects that can cause spina bifida, neurotube defects, delays in growth. Interactions, oral contraceptives and warfarin, grapefruit juice, fentoitin, and phenobarbital. Valporic acid, which can treat all types um, of seizures. 
So the other two that we hadn't talked about yet is absent seizures is the brief sudden lapse in attention. A lot of times if children have absent seizures, it'll look like um, they're ignoring the teacher, that they're not paying attention, and this teacher will think that they're not paying attention. Um, myoclonic seizures are, they contract very quickly. It's typically usually of the trunk and the extremities. Um, it is short lasting and it mimics the infantile uh, reflex. So the infant, the startle infantile um, reflex, um, they have that jerking motion. So GI effects, once again, take with food, um, enteric coated, there is a formulation for that. So they take that, remember we don't crush those. Um, hepatotoxicity, um, anorexia, abdominal pain, jaundice. So they need to get baseline liver function tests and then monitor those throughout therapy. Um, look, have them looking for the signs and symptoms of anorexia, abdominal pain, vomiting, jaundice. Remember, where do we find jaundice typically start? Um, it's in the sclera of the eyes. You'll see that yellow discoloration. Um, do not administer this to children younger than the age of two. Once again, starting out at low dose and then don't obviously administer to anybody that has liver disease um, already. Pancreatitis. Um, they may experience some nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. Need to report these immediately. Um, they need baseline amylase and then periodically and then notify the doctor if pancreatitis has occurred. Thrombocytopenia, um, just bruising, bleeding, um, because once again, remember what our platelets do, it clots, so if we're not clotting, um, we need to notify the doctor, so we need to monitor our platelet counts and bleeding times. Uh, CNS effects with hyperammonemia, so too much ammonia in our bodies, uh, vomiting, lethargy, impaired cognitive alertness, so they need uh, baseline ammonia and then periodically. And then if any of these occur, they need to notify their doctor. Um, contraindications, pregnancy risk category D. Pregnancy with valproic acid, um, it's tetragenic, so that is harmful to the child or the infant or unborn. Um, cuff lip and palate and heart defects. Um, interactions, fentoitin and phenobarbital. Lamotrigine, which is lamictal. Uh, CNS effects. Um, Lamotrigine can treat all types of seizures. And um, dizziness, solulence, um, aphasia, which is they can't talk, double or blurred vision, headache, nausea, vomiting, and depression. Um, this works for absent seizures in all other forms. Avoid activities that require alertness until they know the effects can be stabilized. Withhold the medication if any of these get severe and then monitor the suicidal um, ideations. Aseptic meningitis, um, and this is inflammation of the meninges without any bacterial infection. So this means there's no bacteria in it, there's no infection, it just mimics the meningitis. So they'll have headaches, fever, stiff neck, nausea, vomiting, rash, and sensitive to light. They need to monitor and report any of these that occur. And then obviously withhold until we can figure out uh, what is going on with them. Um, skin disorders, um, Steven Johnson syndrome or toxic um, epiderm epidermal uh, necros necrolysis, um, necrolysis, which is they're eating away at the skin. Um, especially it, the risk goes up if they're taking it with valproic acid. Uh, they need to report this um, if it becomes severe. Um, otherwise, if it's a mild reaction, they can anti-inflammatories or antihistamine. Pregnancy risk category C. Um, and then in, during pregnancy, um, it is tetragenic, cleft lip and palate is low risk, um, but they do have a risk for heart defects. Um, Tupiramate, um, this is um, complications, your CNS effects, which is all the things that we've talked about except for the diplopia, um, impaired cognitive function, so withhold if any of these get severe. 
It can reduce the sweat and increase the body temperature or sweating. So make sure that they just monitor their activity, uh, strenuous activity, because they could become overheated very quickly. Uh, metabolic acidosis, so we need to monitor their bicarbonate levels, um, report any hyperventilations, fatigue, or anorexia, and then hold this medication um, if these develop. And then angle closure glaucoma, um, ocular pain, redness, blurring of vision, because um, this is manifestations of glaucoma, they need to report, and then they need to make sure they have um, periodic um, eye exams to monitor the inocular uh, pressure. Contraindications, pregnancy risk category D, pregnancy, um, it's a tetragenic, it's cleft lip and palate and heart defects as well. Um, phenophentoin and carbamazepine as interactions. Gabapentin, um, CNS, this treats partial seizures. Um, solulence, dizziness, ataxia, fatigue, nystagmus, peripheral edema, so this will diminish over time. Um, and so they need to avoid driving if they're obviously drowsy. Um, education, um, monitor therapeutic plasma levels to make sure that um, they're staying within to help prevent seizures. Keep a frequent seizure diary. Avoid pregnancy. You know, once again, that's going to be the ultimate choice of the parents of whether or not uh, risk over benefits um, or benefits will over risk. So, um, Fintoitin itself is a two twice a day BID, then once a day extended release form, and it has a very narrow therapeutic range. So, too high or too low, um, it, there's not much room there to play with when it comes to um, dosing that medication.